So when we can sort of forgive ourselves, it opens up this huge area of where we can be happy and be healthy and be successful. You know, sometimes that is how simple it is. There's something inside of you, I'm not good enough, I did this and I shouldn't have done that and you feel so guilty. <sighs> how long do you have to feel guilty for? Even in jail, they only put you in jail for five years or six years or something. And sometimes people keep their guilt for much longer than that. And of course you don't even need to go to jail at all. In Buddhism, you know this is one thing which I often say on a Friday night, we don't have guilt. That thing doesn't exist in Buddhism, as I know it. You do something wrong, welcome to the club. <laughs> okay, what have I done wrong? Uh, these are old stories of things which I've done wrong, but this is one of the funny ones. And I told it the other day, and people have forgot I told it probably last year sometime. But this was the, the story when I got called to go to Royal Perth Hospital by a family of this Chinese fellow who was passing away. And uh, he was, they said, you've got to come quick, he's really, really sick, he's in the ICU, maybe only an hour or two to go. So I rushed, you know, into the hospital, so got up to the ICU, saw the family, just mm -hmm. so said, hello, I've arrived, I'm, I'll see what I can do. Went into the ICU, stood by the bed of this guy who was totally unconscious, obviously, close to death, and I really gave full power chanting to. Now this doesn't always work, but no, that day I was really on song. You know, that's just like people playing football or tennis. Sometimes you can just crack that ball, it always goes in. <laughs> and this was one of those days I was just really on, on my game. And I chanted and chanted and chanted. He came out of coma. <laughs> it, was like, it was like a miracle. And it doesn't always happen, very rarely actually, but this time it actually did. <laughs> came out of coma and the doctor was amazed he was going to survive now. And so when I went out feeling all good about myself, and then went out to see the family and said, oh well, I, I really did it. You know, he came out of the coma, he's probably going to live now. And that's when the SHIT hit the fan. <laughs> because these were the family who'd come from Taiwan, Hong Kong, mainland China. <laughs> they stopped all their work, they got these expensive flights, you know, no moment, a moment's notice. They came over to be with their patriarch for the last few hours of his life. They had already arranged a funeral service. <laughs> <laughs> now they're going to have to stop it and cancel it, and they say, you have cost us a lot of money, Ajahn Brahm. <laughs> He's going to die again, maybe another six months, so he comes back again and dies properly, but this time, No, so they were not happy with me at all. All that way, stopping what I'd, I'd got no donations to the monastery, not even for the cost of the petrol in the car. <laughs> I never heard of the big end. <laughs> so that was my mistake. But what do you do when you make mistakes like that? You learn. So now, now when I go to the hospital, I ask, first of all, what type of chanting do you want? <laughs> Get better chant or die peaceful chant, they're different! <laughs> so I make mistakes and I, I tell everybody, because it's good fun, isn't it? Sometimes you make mistakes like that. And you know, sometimes you can't make up these stories, they're totally true. But they're good fun as well. <laughs> Maybe for me, not for that Chinese family, but you can't please everybody. So but anyway, by the, the time you, you laugh at your mistakes, you learn from them.
You never feel you say, oh, I'm terrible, Mark. I should not have done that, I should have done something better. Because if you do, you lose, well, sometimes you lose your confidence, you lose your ability just to go in there and just give a talk and give some chanting, connect with people. And when I'm not afraid of me, then I'm not afraid of you. If you're afraid of yourself, something inside of you, you just Ooh, don't want them to find out this. And of course, then you're sort of too protective, you're not open enough to show real kindness and compassion to others. But most importantly, it's great to show kindness and compassion to yourself. Because there's a lot of times that I sometimes wonder, just, you come here on a Friday evening, many of you have finished work early, you haven't had, probably had your dinner yet, so many things you have to do in life, why do you come here? Is it just for the talk? Look, quite honestly, this evening, what new stuff have I taught? Not much. <laughs> but that's not the point, is it? There's something else which is taught. The kindness, the joy, and encouraging each one of you to also just have that kindness to yourself. And to realize, doesn't matter what your mother and father told you. Doesn't matter what your teachers at school tell you. Doesn't matter what your partner tells you, what your bosses tell you. You know what you're like. And you're a pretty good human being. So celebrate your goodness. Let yourself know that. And never ever think you don't deserve happiness. You deserve everything. You know that. And I said, for many people, I started making this happiness certificate for them. Just to reinforce the idea that this certificate it's on BSWA, no, it's on Bodhinyana Monastery letterhead, I think. This certificate grants the holder the right to be happy. For any reason or no reason at all. <laughs> For the rest of their life. And the next lives as well. Signed, Ajahn Brahm.